Hi guys, how are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. For those of you who are new, my name is Eva and for those of you who are returning, as always, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome to another MLM shit show. <laughs> I love saying that. So today we are back for a little bit of a different format for MLM fails, but I came across this Monet training that I really wanted to include. Take a look at the graph if you've been enjoying my content for a while or if you're new here and if you like anti-MLM content, click that like and subscribe button. It would really help me out a lot. Oh my god, I cannot speak today. As per usual, I am going to put a little disclaimer in here and let's get into the video. Oh my god, my stove broke down. It doesn't work anymore at all. And I have a contractor coming over on Friday afternoon to fix it. Am I the only one that is kind of uncomfortable when I'm home alone? Random strangers are coming into the apartment to fix things. Am I the only one? Is this just a part of being a woman? I don't know. Like logically, you know, he's just doing his job. He's there. He just wants to get it over with and get his paycheck. Has nothing to do with our Monet training so let's just get into it um today's topic is extra special because it's a topic that I get asked all the time it's a very popular question in my DMs especially if you're new to the business okay and that is how to get market partners how to recruit how to grow your team the first thing I'm going to say is there is no right or wrong way. I mean, there are some wrong ways, but there is not like the perfect and only way to recruit, okay? We are all different individuals. That's what makes us so special. And our potentials and the people we're speaking to are all very different too, which is why every conversation and every scenario is different and is special. I am going to share what has worked for me, the way I have done it, the way I tell my girls to do it, but I always advise you, if you've been if you've been doing things a certain way and they are not working, try something new. OK, be open minded, be open to advice. Maybe you were always told to do it one way. If that way is working, great. Keep it up. If it's not working, try something new. OK, the first step to recruitment is you need to believe in the opportunity yourself. You need to believe in the products. You need to believe in the company. You need to believe in the network marketing model. OK, because if we are not even sure of it ourselves, how are we going to try and preach it or sell it or to convince someone else to do it? So I know if you're new, you're probably wondering, like, how can I believe it? I haven't gotten a paycheck yet. I don't know if it's real. Well, I believed it since before I got a paycheck. I believed it because I saw the vision. I believed it because I saw and heard of success stories. I saw that people had done it in the past and it can be done again. So from day one, I put it in my head. This company works. Network marketing works. These product works. I will make this work. What happens when we believe that is that we speak more confidently to people. We're not as scared to approach people when it comes to conversation, when they ask us about the business or when we are presenting the business to them. So the first thing we need to work on is our self-confidence in speaking about this company. How do we feel about it? Okay, excitement and passion are two huge, huge things that I, like, I think help me close so many market partners. They can see my excitement, they can see my passion. And even though maybe we're not talking face to face, I'm really big on voice notes, they can hear my voice, okay? And that's one of the tips I will recommend to you. Phone calls and voice notes, I love it. Texting is just way too much. But okay, I, I got ahead of myself. So number one is believe in the business, believe in the products, have confidence, okay? When you're talking to a potential, the rules I always give are keep it simple, keep it short, be yourself and ask questions. OK, when we are talking to someone about the business, yes, we are the ones presenting the business, but they are the ones that need it. And we need to know why they need it, why they want it, why this business even crossed their mind in the first place. So. I'm gonna give you one quick example. If someone reaches out to me and says, hi Joe, tell me more about the business. The first thing I do is say, hey, how are you? I would love to tell you all about it. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do now? This is crucial if you don't know the person you're talking to, okay? 
And this is if they reach out to you, because I'm going to cover cold messaging in a little bit. So if the person reaching out to you, they're strangers, you don't know them, ask them a little bit about themselves. What do you do now? Tell me a little bit about you. Why? Because if you know a little bit about that person, you can relate to that person. Okay. And maybe necessarily you can't like, let's say if I have a full-time student that reaches out to me, I am not a full-time student anymore. So I can't be like, I feel you. So am I, but there's plenty of full-time students on my team, which is why it's very important for us to learn who we're working with, our sidelines, our uplines, our downlines, so that if you do get a full-time student and you're not that full-time student, you can say, oh my God, perfect. There's so many girls in my team that go to school full-time. For example, X, Y, and Z. She's been doing this business for five months and she fits it into her schedule. Like You want to give that potential, that peace of mind that someone else with her same situation is already doing the business and is being successful with it. So ask questions as to what they're doing. And when they tell you what they're doing and you relate to them, my first introduction of the business is always like the same two to three sentences. Again, doesn't mean that's perfect. It doesn't mean I know it all. It means that's what I say and that's what works for me. I say, what we do is network marketing. We promote vegan, anti-aging hair care and skincare products. We make money by selling the products and growing a team. If I'm correct here, I don't think Monet is allowed to be claiming that they are vegan, that they do vegan products because they're not vegan. This is called Monet Recruiting Tips, how I get Monet market partners. And this woman has like 14.7k subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers. And this particular training video has 71k views. And then the first comment below says, this is the best advice I've heard. I can see why she made it this far. If we roll back a little bit, we've watched a good few trainings by now. The advice that this woman is giving is literally no different from any other advice that we've seen so far. Not even other Monet reps literally across all different MLMs, all the training that we've seen, they all repeat the same exact things. So it's just sad that some people were listening to this and thinking to themselves, wow, this, this is so great. This is such great advice. And what is she telling them? She's literally just telling them how to manipulate people, in my opinion, into thinking that you're friends because it's easier to sell and it's easier to recruit them that way. This is not great advice. This is literally basic advice that's being recycled over and over and over again across all freaking MLM companies out there. And she's gonna get to cold messaging a little bit later. I'm very excited about that. You need to ask your potential customers, oh, what do you do, where you're from, just so that you can find some common ground so that you can kind of relate to them, they can relate to you. That way, when you create that connection, it is a connection, but it's a fake connection. At least when there were cold messaging people, you would see the cold message and you would know, oh, this is an MLM hunt. She just wants to recruit me and, you know, get money off of me. And you would be able to ignore them, maybe troll them, get a few good messages for Reddit or whatever, you know? But when they're actually creating these connections with people and talking to them, it's just a lot more manipulative and it's just, it's just wrong. But anyway, there's a lot left, so let's move on end it with a question why because when someone sees a question mark they feel like they have to answer you a little more than if you end it with let me know or you just don't say anything so i always end it with a question notice that my pitch was so short so straight to the point and so simple i did not mention the company's name i did not mention how much money you can make i did not mention all the different type of products we have i literally said network marketing we promote vegan, anti-aging hair care and skin care, and we make money by selling the products and growing a team. Is this something you see yourself doing? They're then going to say like, sure, or tell me a little more, or, what's the name of the company, or how do you sell the products? It's hard for me to give you guys like the perfect conversation example because they're all so different. But if they say, for example, like, how do you sell the products? I say, however you feel the most comfortable. This is your own business. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, uh, what else is out there? <laughs> TikTok, whether it's word of mouth, hosting events, asking for referrals, there is no like perfect right or only way to run your business. However you feel the most comfortable reaching people, that is how your business will be ran. 
okay um a couple of things that i always do add 99 percent of the time is i let them know that we don't carry any inventory so that means that we don't have to spend a certain amount of money monthly buying products that we have no monthly fees and no monthly quotas and then i say in the simplest way if you work you get paid if you don't work you won't get paid but there is no penalty that's usually as far as i'll go um, I know when you're new, you're really excited and you want to say, we get free trips and we get paid up to five times a month and you can make this much money a month and it's just too much. So you guys have to remember that people from the outside looking in, these things can sound like a little bit out of reach. Um, I'll speak for myself. I used to be very close-minded, very complacent with life. So if you told me you could get a free car, you could get free trips, you could, I would have been like, no, 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 that's too hard. That's not real. So, re, like, refrain from saying too much because even though in your mind you think you're selling it to them and you're telling them all the amazing perks our company has, you could actually be doing a disservice if you're turning them off by making it seem like a little bit too good to be true. So always um, just answer the questions they have. Be patient with the conversation, okay? Have confidence. I love, love, love voice notes. Right now I close majority of my market partners with voice notes. However, when I was newer, I did do a lot of phone calls. I said, do you have 10 minutes to get on a quick call? It's great because you guys can you know, go back and forth and it done. Text messaging, I do not like at all. I always miss messages. It takes too long to write something and then it looks like she's getting a story and it's going to turn her off and I, I just don't like messages. So always make sure you're ending it or closing it or tying it together by telling them what this company can do for them. Okay, it's not about you. Don't focus on oh, the sun. <laughs> don't focus on, um, you know, getting that bonus for that market partner, adding one more girl to your team. Our focus in this company is always to help others. OK, how can this change his or her life? So always tell them what is in it for them. OK, um, what else do I have here? Don't be afraid to ask for the sale. You know, ask, are you ready to join my team? Is this something you see yourself doing? If they ask you, like, I have to think about it. Was there something that I wasn't clear on? I would love to, you know, answer all your questions. I know for some of us that can be scary and it can be like a little bit pushy. Oh my God, I'm scared. No, people appreciate honesty. Remember, a confused mind always says no. So if they are the bit, at least this bit confused or they just something wasn't clear, people prefer to say no instead of asking for further explanations. So whenever someone tells me I'm going to think about it, I say, like, what is it to think about? Is there something I can clear up? I have to talk to my husband. I would love to answer any questions your husband has. Like, ask for the sale because if they're not interested, I want to hear a no. I don't want to hear, oh, let you know. Like, why let me know? You know, what's going to change between now and, you know, tomorrow? A lot of the things can change between now and tomorrow. Like, they can Google network marketing. Maybe they can end up on certain anti MLM channels or anti MLM Reddit page where a lot of people share their own stories. Yeah, a lot can happen between today and tomorrow. And she is very well aware of that, which is exactly why she's trying to keep pushing the people into speaking right now, making the decisions right now as soon as possible before they get the time and the chance to actually look into things a little bit more further, do a little bit more research and figure out that it is not a great opportunity as these hunts make it sound like. So obviously they're doing whatever they can in order to avoid people saying no and it is very pushy. If someone says they need to think about something, if you're not doing anything sketchy, if it's proper opportunity for that person why are you scared that they're gonna say no just let them think about it let them talk about it with their partner and if you're not trying to scam them they will probably come back saying yes this is just a tutorial on how to manipulate and rush people into joining your network marketing scheme and it should be renamed into that and again this is something that we've heard a lot of the times before that they are calling people who are not open to this opportunity this amazing opportunity 
community, small minded people. So the whole community, the whole anti-MLM community, all of the people out there who are saying no to their amazing opportunity are just small minded people. And it's just insane. So there you go. If you didn't know it by now, we are very small minded people. Let's move on. Forever, well, at least I've never done it and I preach it to my team. Never cold message, okay? So what is a cold message? A cold message is when you write like, you know, a paragraph saying, I work for the number one company, hair care company, North America. We promote hair care and skin care. You can make money from your phone. We are in five countries, like this predetermined message. And then you copy and paste it to a bunch of random people. Cold messaging is messaging people you do not know. And the way I see it is, why are you messaging someone you don't know? That's rude, especially if you're offering them a business opportunity or products. That's going to scare them away. That's going to give network marketing a bad name. They're probably going to make fun of you and make fun of the company. And they are 99.99% not going to join. So me, my girls, at least I preach them, do not cold message, okay? If you find the need to cold message and for whatever reason you are cold messaging i at least ask you to take two seconds of your time and review the instagram page of the person you're messaging okay i've personally gotten cold messages before from other people in the business and it blows my mind because if you go to my page you can see that i do monet if you watch two of my stories i'm either talking about the business or the products or anything so if for whatever reason you see the ultimate need to send a cold message, at least do a little background on the person, look through their stories, see a couple of their posts, look at their highlights and see if they're already part of this business or another business, okay? My advice is never cold message, but if you must for whatever reason, at least check their page first, okay? Okay, so there it is, a classic. <laughs> classic advice that they always like to say on these trainings as i said before not just monet reps all the other mlm companies they all repeat the same things over and over again do not call message i don't call message my team doesn't call message don't do it but if you do <laughs> then at least you know stalk them a little bit before you message them so there you go another great advice don't call message but if you have to find out something about them and you know so you can manipulate them easier my god let's move on how should you start recruiting when you're new i asked my girls to make a list of 100 people that they that they know okay this list is going to start i know 100 names sounds like it's crazy and i don't know 100 people but i promise you do so you're going to start with your super hot market who's your super hot market parents siblings cousins best friends boyfriends or girlfriends, co-workers, the best friend of your cousin, like people you really know and you feel really comfortable with enough to go to them and say, hey, I just joined this business. I know I don't know much about it, but I'm excited and I'm going to be a millionaire and I want you to do this with me. That's literally what I told my warm market when I started. So your warm market is people you feel super comfortable like just saying that to and they're not going to be like, okay, you're crazy. Okay, so that's probably going to be anywhere between 10 to 30 people, depending how many people you know. So then it's going to start going down to your like warmer, colder market. And it's people you know, the people you haven't spoken to in a long time, or maybe people you don't have such a strong relationship with. For example, co-workers that maybe work on a different floor than you, maybe your neighbor, maybe your son's teacher, um your cousin's boyfriend's sister like you know of her and maybe you've met her once or twice but like that's about it maybe someone you went to middle school or high school with your manager at your first retail job like these are all people you've met but you just haven't kept in contact with or don't talk to every day these are the people that are going to go towards the bottom of your list okay so yes all the hundred people in your list you should have you should have at least met in your life or or you can say, hey, Joe gave me your number. Pretend Joe is your best friend and you ask your best friend for her mom's number. Like, okay, Joe, if you're not interested in the business, give me your mom's number. I would love to offer this to her. So when you reach out to Joe's mom, it's not weird because you're going to say, hey, my name is Joanna and Joe gave me your number because I want to present this to you. 
that's as much as I I would personally go about um, messaging people that I don't know if I at least if they come as referrals okay to your to your list of a hundred people you should be adding names every single day okay that is how your list is never going to run out that is how you turn your cold market into your warm market and excuse my nails I just noticed <laughs> Um, so how do you do that? If you start following this new girl on Instagram that you think she's so cute and you would love to work with her, but she's a complete stranger, you found her through some hashtags, you're going to follow her, you're liking her pictures, you're commenting on her pictures, maybe you wrote back to her story and she wrote back to you and you guys are starting to make a connection, write down her name at the bottom of your list and continue making that connection. In a month, in two months, I don't know how fast that friendship will form, she is now part of your warm market because even though you guys haven't met in person, you have a friendship online. And then it's acceptable to offer the business to her. Before that, no. Just like when you go out and meet people, if you meet someone at the park, at the mall, at Publix, wherever, and you connect with them on Instagram. You know, I used to be so scared of talking to people in person and now I'm like the pro. I love recruiting in person. And when I recruit in person, I never offer them the business right away. I make a connection with them 90% of the time it's because they're moms and they have kids and I'll, I'll start asking them questions about the baby and I'll say, you know, give me your Instagram, maybe we can plan a play day or we can stay connected online, whatever. Because I know once they're in my Instagram page, since I post about my business every day, as so should all of you, they're going to see what I'm doing. Maybe ask, maybe not ask, but after a couple months of talking, then I can offer it to them. So that list of 100 people, should, you should always be adding names to it, okay? Every day, every week, whenever, you should always have new potentials that you're working on or reaching out to. Wow, this was outrageous. This is by far the worst part of this interview. It's just shocking to me how they put these manipulation tactics just out there like that, you know? I mean, it's good for all the other people because people can look up these trainings. They can find them. Obviously, they can find them in anti-MLM videos like this one. One. but they're putting these things on public platforms where anyone can see it like your potential customer find your name on youtube her channel in general and see this training and be like what this bitch talk to me about my baby and wants to have a play date with me only because she wants to recruit me into her fucking MLM. You know, you would think that they would be a little bit more sneaky about it. It just doesn't make sense from their perspective. Shouldn't it be like a little bit of a more secretive training, you know, maybe more private with just you and your downline rather than putting it out like this for everyone to see? Or like I said, your potential customers are literally watching you on YouTube teaching your downline how to manipulate people, going on play dates with people just so that you can recruit them. That is insane. That is so much effort. You just can't trust anyone these days, can you? Again, the thing that we hear very often is add people on Instagram, whatever, compliment them, create the relationships, which again, after hearing that she actually meets people, moms with their babies, gives compliments to their babies just to start a conversation because she knows it's a good starter but then what is the difference if you met someone on social media right you follow someone on instagram and you chat to them a few times you exchange a few messages over a few months what is the difference between them and your brother's girlfriend that you met only once in your life but you never spoke to her other than that so how is she a warmer market than a random girl on instagram it's almost the same thing you know of her but you've never really met her or had a conversation with you how is she a warm market if you literally just know of her you don't know her you're not friends it's outrageous that the first thing they say they tell you to do is to go recruit your parents your siblings your cousins it's just crazy this legit made me angry <laughs> okay so i know tina tina doesn't want to join me but i can ask her from her mother and she literally said pretend like you and tina are best friends in front of her mother and try to recruit her mother like are you insane like what do you do you hear yourself talking it's nothing innovative it's nothing great but it's definitely out 
outrageous and let me know down below if you got pissed off especially with the last bit as much as I got pissed off but yeah I have to wrap that up here thank you for watching it I hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this and as always thank you to all of you nice people supporting me if you're not coming from my social media feel free to check me out I'm gonna leave the link to my Instagram down below and yeah thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one bye